From this distant point of view, the Earth can look not very interesting. But for us, it's different. Consider again that point. That is here. That is our home. That is us. Every person that you've loved, met, of those you've never heard, every human being that has existed has lived there. The sum of all the joy and suffering of our species have lived there, in a dust speck suspended in a sunshine. Hi, and welcome to Ask for Science. And these were the words that Carl Sagan wrote while he was watching this photograph taken by the Voyager 1 when it was 6 billion kilometers from Earth in 1990. At one point, it focused its camera to the Earth and took this picture. Watching this picture, anyone can feel very small, but it's normal, because the humans are very small compared to the universe around us, or not. The human being has an average height of 1.7 meters, but this height didn't make us fear the altitude. Actually, the tallest building built by us, the Burj Khalifa, measures an incredible 828 meters. It is so high that if you were in the base of the building watching the sunset and went up with the elevator, you could see the sunset again. Although this is nothing compared to the 8,844 meters that measures the Everest, the highest mountain on Earth, which also continues to grow specifically 4 millimeters per year. Italy and California have a similar size, thing that isn't very surprising, but the fact that they measure approximately the same radius of Pluto is. Now I understand better why he's not considered a planet. Now, about planets, Earth, our planet, has surprisingly approximately the same size as Sirius B, the brightest star known. We usually think that the Sun is the brightest star, but our star shines that much due to the proximity to us. A star similar in size to the Sun is Altair, which has one of the highest rotation speeds ever known. It spins at an exorbitant speed of 250 kilometers per second, a speed so high that it causes it to have a flat shape. If we go even further, we find VY Canis Majoris, which is one of the largest stars ever found. Here you can see what the sun would measure compared to it. For you to imagine, a plane would have to travel 1200 years to go around it, since it measures 2 million kilometers in diameter. If we keep going, we won't find more stars, we will start seeing nebulae, massive accumulations of interstellar dust which take peculiar forms that allow them to have funny names. There are some that don't measure up to a light year, like the Cat's Eye Nebula or the hourglass, but if those ones seem big to you, you have to know that they are one of the smallest. The Ant Nebula measures the impressive amount of two light years, meaning that light takes two years to go from one end to the other. Amazing. In a similar size, we can also find the Skemo, the Rotten Egg, or the Boomerang Nebula. And this last one being the coldest object known in the universe. Much bigger are the pillars of creation, some dust and gas clouds that measure 10 light years of height, which unfortunately no longer exist. A supernova destroyed them 6,000 years ago, but fortunately they are 7,000 light years from here, so that for 1,000 more years we can keep enjoying them. But what really set records are not these gigantic pillars, but the colossal Tarantula Nebula, which is the largest known with 600 light years long. But let's go to the next level, to galaxies. The Sombrero Galaxy is one of the smallest known, it measures under half of the Milky Way, but that doesn't make it less beautiful. A quite larger one is the NGC 4889 Galaxy, who measures the same distance that what the Earth has traveled throughout its history since the solar system was created. It's very big, and it contains also in its center one of the largest black holes ever found. And if we go even further, we find Abel 2029, a galaxy group in which we can find the biggest one, being 80 times bigger than ours. It's too big to even be able to imagine it. Really, there are few things that exceed this sizes. In fact, it is argued if they should really be considered things. An example of this is the Arrhenius Void, a large region of the universe which is slightly colder than the average temperature of the universe. It doesn't contain anything and doesn't emit radiation. But let's continue our travel and go to the huge and colossal Sloan Great Wall, what is officially the largest object known in the universe. 
It is a filament containing a lot of galaxies, including ours, and it measures 1300 million light years. It's too big for you to imagine. So that you get an idea of its size, it is one tenth of the distance that separates the Earth from the Hubble's deep field, one of the oldest pictures ever made. With regard to this photograph, I could also say that it is one of the most far taken. But I say old because this wonderful picture shows how the universe was like 12 billion years ago. Only 1 billion years after the universe's creation. We are so far away from it that the light has needed practically the whole history of the universe to get here. And the galaxies that we see most likely do not exist. But the photograph supposes a precious sample of how the universe has been evolving throughout its existence. This limitation of the speed of light means that we can only see the part of the universe that we have close enough so that the light has arrived to us. So we don't know the real size of the universe as a whole. In fact, we don't even know if it has a limit. We can only say that the observable universe, a tiny fraction of the universe, has 93 billion light years across. If we do the math, we should expect a lot less, because before I said that the light only had 13 billion light years to travel. But as the space is expanding at an accelerating pace, the first galaxies who emitted their faraway ancient light already are much further away than they were before. Having reached these measurements, it is very difficult to get an idea of the size it represents. The Earth, compared to the whole universe, for you to imagine, is the same as what a virus is compared to the whole solar system. Because talking about viruses, if we compare them to us, people, they are very small. What if we travel to the smallest things? Humans are, although it doesn't seem like it, very big animals. While it is true that there are bigger species than us, if calculations are made, more than 99% of them are smaller than us. If we start to go down in our trip to the smallest, we can find that the wavelength of the waves of a microwave, being a wavelength the distance between two crests of a wave, is about the same as that of a coin. So the next time that you put something in a microwave, think that it gets full of waves of the same measurement of a penny. And now that we're talking about money, it is always said that it is full of bacteria, but for sure it doesn't contain samples of Tyre Margarita Nami the biggest bacterium known, lives in the coasts of Namibia and can reach one millimeter, enough for you to be able to see it with the naked eye. If we go down a bit more, we reach 100 micrometers, a tenth of a millimeter, and this distance is the minimum that an object must have to be able to be seen with the naked eye by us. Fortunately, we have microscopes that allow us to study things that measure less, like the bacteria Escherichia coli, which is the most studied prokaryotic organism in history. This well-known bacterium can be beneficial or harmful, and it's found in the intestines of everyone, colonizing newborns in just two days. Of a similar size, we can find the human sex chromosomes, or the wavelength of visible light. But very different to bacteria are viruses that are not considered living things, because they don't perform the functions of relationship and nutrition, only reproduction. There is many controversy with the subject of viruses. There are groups of people who consider them to be very simple living beings, by the mere fact that they only perform a vital function. But there is another group of people who consider them a very evolved and complex being, because of that incredible ability to thrive. Actually, viruses are things that simply insert their genetic material in living things, for it to let place to more genetic material which will travel encapsulate it to another prey. The bacteriophages, a type of virus, seem to confirm it. They actually look like alien robots. Now that we're talking about machines, we have to talk about transistor gates, which are smaller than what you can see with an optical microscope. And amazingly, every day, we make smaller sizes. Back to the living, the DNA you have in your cells is only 3 nanometers wide, but it's so extremely long that in a single cell there are 3 meters of it. Yes, in one cell. And if you sum the length of the DNA of all your body, it would give you nothing less than 115 billion kilometers, which is more than 19 times the distance to Pluto. And that is only one person. It's fascinating. But let's go to smaller things, like the cesium atoms, which is one of the largest atoms, similar to the wavelength of the X-rays. This wavelength so small that the X-rays have 
is what makes them so harmful for the human body. If we continue a little more, we get to the 50 picometers, which is the shortest distance you can see with an electron microscope, and it's also the size of the hydrogen atom, which is the most abundant element in the universe, constituting not more than 75% of all matter. In fact, the massive pillars of creation are mainly composed of this element. We usually have an image of the nucleus of the atom as something big, when in fact the difference between the nucleus and the size of the atom is abysmal. To give you an idea, if the atom had the size of a soccer field, the nucleus would only be the size of a shirt button. What is even more amazing is the distance that exists between the nucleus and its cortex, which is an immense empty space much bigger than you can imagine. It is so extremely big that if we take away this distance in all the atoms that form all the people of the world, all humanity would fit in a single sugar jar. It's for this reason that the nuclei of the atoms are so small. Even uranium, which is the largest chemical element found naturally, its measurement is similar to that of electrons, the particles found in the nuclear cortex. However, the size of electrons is something that is not known with total certainty, given that quantum theory has shown that depending on how the electron is measured, this will be more or less large. What I just said is something weird. It does not fit with a human logic. This is why quantum physics has some very rare principles, but they help to explain why the particles behave in this way. One of them is called uncertainty principle. Imagine that we want to measure the charge or what an electron measures. To do so, it is necessary to send a photon so that the electron can be detected. But by sending a photon, the properties of this electron will change. That is why if we want to observe an electron, with the mere fact of observing it, we will distort the results that we're going to get. So by the fact of observing, we change the initial properties. This is how quantum physics work. For this reason, from this scale of magnitudes, the sizes we know are only estimated. Now that we have reached the small quantum world, we find some peculiar particles, the quarks, which don't follow the conventional physics laws. This is why their names seemingly have no logic, despite being officially used by the scientific community. There are six kinds of quarks. The up, down, strange, charm, top and bottom. Very cool names. Quarks are what form the subatomic particles, such as protons and neutrons. A proton that, as we saw before, is really small, is formed by three quarks. So actually quarks are really tiny. Another curiosity of the quarks is that the smaller they are, the more mass they have, being the top quark 10,000 times smaller than the up, but 100,000 times heavier. Fascinating, but it makes no sense. But what is actually strange and amazing are neutrinos, which are the smallest and least heavy particles known. In fact, they weigh 5 times 10 to the power of minus 36 kilograms. You may think that they are not really important, what do they have to do with you? But neutrinos really are closer to you than you think. Or rather, neutrinos are inside of you. Every second that passes, approximately 200 trillion of them go through you. However, the fact that they are so small makes this particle able to cross without problems 200 planets Earth. So neutrino detectors can be placed underground and are essential for understanding how our universe works. At this point it seems impossible that we can go deeper, but according to quantum physics theories that every day look more correct, you can go down much more until you reach the quantum foam and the strings. The quantum foam is believed to be the structure in which the universe exists, and the strings, it is believed that they are the ones that form all the existing particles in the universe, and depending on how they vibrate, they form different particles. Quantum strings are extremely small objects. A lot bigger are the strings that we usually see, like guitar strings or the ropes that we use to tie things. But the strings that are really big are those that are composed of thousands and thousands of galaxies and forming thick networks throughout the universe. So now, are we big or are we small? And in my personal opinion, realizing how small we are is what makes us huge. Thank you for watching the video and goodbye.